Many artists who came before us would use whatever tool they needed to uh, to get their point across. They used rulers, calipers, and, and, and many other devices that, that would help them uh, uh, depict their art. Now, I'm going to go through a series of tools, and they, and they should be taken for exactly that. They're, they're tools to use uh, when you need them. Uh, they're much like a paintbrush or, or any other tool. Uh, and the first one I'm going to talk about is the grid. A very old concept. Many of the old masters used grids. Some of them would use large grids, huge things. And, and then because they didn't have photographs and, and uh, other paper media that they could draw on. And, and they would use them outside. Uh, I, I went through gridding when I was much younger and, and I had a hard time with it and it took me a while before I learned. It's really not that difficult if, if you stop and think about it. Uh, one of the first things I did, w which really didn't work out well, is, that, is I bought what they call a gridding kit. Uh, let, let me show you, show you what I mean. You get a lot of transparencies with grids on it. A lot of it. And, and you get a funny looking little ruler that comes with it. Uh, the problem with it is in white. And, and, uh, and, it, and it was sort of difficult for me to try and figure it out. And, and of course you can't use it outside uh, if you're not going to use a photograph or anything. Now, now these guys would make these grids and, and they would put them up in front of themselves. And, and, and then they would put like a chin rest there so that they're head was always in the same position. So if you're going to use a grid and you're going to go outside and paint and you're not going to draw lines on a piece of paper, uh, they, there are some out there in the market now that, that are pretty good. Uh, this, this is one of them. And, and the, the problem with it is it's pretty small, but that's all right. You, you can work with it. And, and uh, if, you know, to get the proper what they call aspect ratio, you're probably going to have to tape off certain parts of this. But when you use something like this, it has nice black lines on it, you can see through it. Make sure when you mount it and, and you're looking at, at your object in real life, that you always look at the same spot. Or else, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to look right when you're trying to transpose it from one to the other. But if you're really good, uh, it really doesn't matter. Just get you in the ballpark and then you fill in the rest when you get there. I'm going to show you a simple method on how to grid. It's really not very complicated and you can use any size. Now you say, well, why do I have to grid when I can draw very, very well? Well, and you're not going to sight size a 22 foot wall by a 40 foot wall. Uh, you're going to, it's without a doubt, you're going to have to have some grid to get from your initial sketch or drawing up to that huge size. And, and that concept can apply all the way down to a full sheet of watercolor paper. When you grid, there's, there's two ways to grid. You can adjust your support, your canvas or paper, to fit your source. Or you can adjust your source to fit your canvas or your paper. The first one we're going to do is adjusting your support for the source. The source being your sketch or your, or your photograph or whatever you're using. For this uh, particular demonstration I'm going to use uh, a reproduction of a painting I did which didn't work out well. The repro didn't work out well and, and uh, show you how to do it. This is an 8 by 10. Okay, your support is going to have to be an 8 by 10 or if you want it larger, let's go up one and a half times, it would be a 12 by 15. Or you go up twice, <clears throat> it would be a 16 by 20. Two and a half would be 20 by 25 and three times would be 24 by 30 and, and you can continue on with that. 
the the numbers that I just quoted to you, if you go twice to a 16 by 20 and you divide your source into one inch squares, then your support is going to have to be twice that. It's going to have to have two inch squares. And, and the same way if you did this and go up three times to a 24 by 30, your one inch squares on your canvas or your support are going to be three inch squares. Whenever I grid like this, I always start the lower left. And for this demonstration, it doesn't really matter whether it's centimeters or inches or feet. I used inches. 10 inches. I go across 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to 10. And I go up A, B, C, D, and use the alphabet. And I do the same across and the same down. You do the same to your support. Uh, one word here. Do not use a pencil or a pen. Go out and get a good watercolor pencil that doesn't stain. And, and use that to draw your grid on your support. Or draw your picture on a piece of tracing paper that's the same size as your support. And then use transfer paper to put it on your support. That works well too. Okay, so I've done all this. I've gridded off my canvas. I've gridded off my source. These can be pretty large squares on your canvas. Three inches is pretty good size. And, you're, and you might need to get more detail in the certain areas on this. So what I've done with this one is I went back and in the facial areas here, I divided each square in half. Well, if I had doubled that, that means I would go over to my canvas and divide the corresponding squares into one inch. And you can continue to do that. You can do a quarter or whatever. The point is, is that you transfer it over from this location to exactly the same location on your support. This particular square here is F. Three. And this one is E3. This one, F5. Okay. Now, when, when you do this, you can do a 5 by 7, and, and we'll run through those. 10 by 14 and, and 15 by 20. 10 by 14 is twice, 15 by 20 is three times the 5 by 7. You can buy canvases and supports this way. Or you can go stretch your own, or you can cut your paper down. Four by sixes. You can go to an eight by twelve, which is twice, obviously. Twelve by eighteen, which is pretty good size, and twenty-four by thirty-six, which is four times the size of a four by six. You using a four by six picture, you're gonna have to get mighty close to it, and and you might need to use a magnifying glass if you're trying to be exactly as the picture. I don't usually do that. I just, you know, put it in there and let the drawing and, and, and the rest of the skills take place. It, to me, gridding just gets you in a general ballpark and then you, then you gotta get it done. If you're doing portraits, big portraits of dogs or people, you might want to consider using this concept. Go out, take a photograph of them, sit with them, sketch them, do whatever you got to do, and then come back and, and start gridding it out. You can grid a sketch. Do that too. Okay, now, now the next one I'm going to talk to you about is a little more difficult, and that's getting your picture getting to fit onto a support. The reason why I talk about that. If you're going to do a wall, it's like 11 by 15 feet. You're going to have to grid. There, there's no way around it. You cannot sight size it or anything else. It's, you can't project anything onto it, particularly if you're working outside. So you're going to have to grid 
And this latter method is the method you're going to have to use to get your source the right size so that you can use it to make something big. Okay, what we're going to discuss is going to be the more difficult of, uh, aspects of gritting. Remembering now, the easiest way to grit is to make yourself a grid um, on plexiglass, glass, or whatever, or, or buy you something. Mount it so you can see through it. And, and make sure you look through it the same way every time, all the time. Transfer the lines from here to your support. What we're doing here, though, is that we're going to adjust our source to our support. And for this illustration, uh, I'm going to use 15 by 22. Uh, this is inches. Uh, if I want to use this, my source document is going to have to be a very odd size. Uh, you're going to have to crop things down to get it to fit in here. If I divide this by a third, it's going to come out 5 by 7.3 inches. So if, if I have a picture, I'm going to have to make sure that I've cropped it to 5 by 7.3 inches and grid it out an inch and then put three inches on this thing here and then divide it on down like I told you earlier. If I do a half, it comes out seven and a half by eleven inches. Well, you can take an eleven by fourteen picture, crop it out to seven and a half, or make your drawing or your sketch seven and a half by eleven. I put it on here, I put an inch on my source, it'd be two inches on here. Okay? Now, let's, let us pretend like this is a wall, 22 meters by 15 meters, pretty good size wall. I want to put a mural on this thing. Like the old masters, uh, what they would do is they, they would make huge things, they call them cartoons, big huge pieces of paper with a drawing on it. And hang it up and then they do what they call pouncing it. They, they got a pounce wheel and they put lines on it and stuff. And that was their drawing. That's how they transferred their drawing to that thing. Uh, you can do that with tracing paper nowadays, but it gets prohibitive <laughs> to hang a big piece of paper or any material up to try and get a drawing done. So what we do is we grid. Uh, we start out with something we can manage. 15 meters by 22 meters. I want to get that down to something I can manage. So I divide it by 50. And when I divide it by 50, it comes out 30 centimeters by a little over 40, 40.4 centimeters. That's a manageable document, source document that I can work with. This is 30 centimeters. Okay. So I got my 30, I got my source, it's 30 centimeters by 40 centimeters. I need to divide it down and so I can grid from my source to this huge wall. If I break this 30 centimeter document down into 10 centimeter sections, that means every section on that wall is going to be 500 centimeters. So I got to break it down into something a little more manageable than that. I break it down to five centimeters. That means every square on that wall is going to be 250 centimeters. I break it down to two and a half centimeters on my source. That means up there on that wall is going to be 125 centimeters. And you can work with that. I mean, you can divide it down further as you go along. Again. That's a big project, and, and, and that's really what gridding was originally meant for. Um, that's about as simple as, as gridding can get.